and welcome to the Burning Disco. This is your host, Caleb Clark, bringing you the worst in hip-hop, whether albums generally considered bad, or albums I just don't personally like. Now, I'd like to begin this review by saying, rest in peace to Big Bang Hank, and blessings to his family. Now, the album today is The Sugar Hill Gang by The Sugar Hill Gang. The Sugar Hill Gang, a little bit redundant, is a rap outfit coming out of New York in the late 70s. They're known for having the first mainstream rap hit, Rapper's Delight. Now, they've got a bit of a contentious legacy within hip-hop. On the one hand, they've brought a bunch of mainstream recognition early on, and so also they're just one of the better remembered acts. Like, if you're generally thinking of a rap songs from the early 80s and like the pre-run DMC stuff, most people will probably say this, and then if they're more of rap fans, they might say Planet Rock, The Message. I think now the show's a little bit after Run DMC came out, but it's closer. Now, on the other hand, first of all, they were a pretty manufactured group. The label head at Sugar Hill just grabbed three rappers. They had, they stole a verse outright from fellow rapper Grandmaster Kaz, and their material aspect of their impact is kind of insignificant. Other than setting the trend of relying on production over rapping, they don't really have the impact that Melly Mel or a, uh, Africa Bambata, pardon me, have had over the years. Now, I knew all this, I tried to go into it with an open mind. And honestly, it's a pretty good album. Uh, I'll start with some general things. A lot of the songs are really long, like not a song on the six song album, clocks in under five minutes. The longest one nearly hits ten minutes. But they managed to keep it going because they've got a lot of good funk grooves, very mid-tempo, bright, just solid stuff that it carries the songs along. And more specifically, there's kind of two halves to the album. There's an R&B side and a rap side. The R&B side is comprised of, let's see, Bad News Don't Bother Me, uh, Passion Play, and Here I Am. These are all sort of light pop love songs with a, a little bit slower, a more soulful groove. They, uh, The singing style is more in the sort of chant stuff that you would hear from P-Funk or the Gap Band, where it's just everyone going in unison. as but they lack a sort of central singer, like George Clinton, or a more individualistic singer. So it sort of robs the songs of a little bit of identity, because they also just don't have a very unique instrumentation group. It's just your basic guitar, bass, drums. So it's pretty competent work. It's just not a ton of pizzazz on the R&B side. Still fun, though. On the rap side, it's pretty, it's a little bit of the same, but it's better remembered because it was early rapping. The All three of the guys have pretty nice bouncy flows, but they're not saying a lot lyrically. The A lot of onomatopoeia, a lot of non sequiturs, a lot of pop culture references and product placement. Of course, there's the infamous part where one of the guys starts rapping about how he went to a friend's food house to eat and the food was terrible. Honestly, it's a bit secondary in a way because the main goal of this album is to just have a good time and they managed to really do that. You always want to sort of get on your feet and bounce to these songs. There were a couple problems I had with it though. Uh, the beat on Sugar Hill Groove was noticeably weaker. Instead of a bass guitar, the main riff is held by more of a rock distorted guitar and it just makes it not as easy to dance to. And they had some cool per sounding percussion breaks in the middle, but it, they got covered up by a sort of lazy timbale. And as a producer who likes using timbales, you gotta go easy on the timbales, my friend. Overall, it's a pretty fun album, but it honestly felt kind of redundant, because honest, they all follow the same formula to their respective genres. Like, the love songs were a few chants about love, you know, Strong groove, as I said. 
the two raps, the three rap songs are all basically Rapper's Delight. Not at all helped by the fact that they continually reference Rapper's Delight in the songs. So that's kind of weakened the experience for me as an out. As just single songs, they're good. But as an album, the repetitive nature of it sort of makes it not as good. But still enjoyable. I would recommend this if you just want to have a good time at a party. Just put a few songs in here. If you're, go if you're going more old school, you know, put in some Earth, Wind & Fire, some Gap Band, some James Brown, Parliament Funkadelic, Cameo. Their elements will be a bit desperate, disparate, but still have a really good time. I would recommend this album, and since it is the first one on this list, it is currently residing at the best and worst spot. I am a huge nerd, and so of course there will be an ongoing list. But don't worry, there will be more albums to come. And so, the Sugar Hill Gang by the Sugar Hill Gang, this is Caleb Clark, Signing off at the Burning Disco.